Welcome to Horizons on the Record. I'm Christina Francis, Executive Director, JFF Labs at Jobs for the Future. And I'm David Sua, Vice President at JFF. For this episode, we're in Miami, a city that's a hub for innovation, including in artificial intelligence. Since launching JFF's Center for AI and Future of Work, we're asking some big questions, particularly how AI accelerates rather than delays access to quality jobs. So please find us on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter, and send us your questions and comments. Artificial intelligence is changing the way we think about the future and the speed at which we work. Amidst a background of sun, sand, and surf, Miami-Dade College serves 125,000 students from 163 nations representing 63 different languages. And the college is leading the way when it comes to educating the next generation in AI. The person behind this innovation is Miami-Dade College President Madeline Humeriega. How did Miami-Dade College become a national leader in AI? I wanted us to think about artificial intelligence not as a technology major, but as a tool that if you are in nursing, you should know artificial intelligence. If you are a teacher and if you're in a teaching pathway, you should know it. And so it became clear that artificial intelligence um, would be a skill set that students would know beyond just a digital platform, really a skill set. But we started with our faculty. And so we trained over 500 faculty by the fall of 2021. And we really wanted our faculty to get comfortable with what was artificial intelligence? What was machine learning? How would it change the way that we work, the way that we play and learn? And so um, they started out, you know, really researching and doing training programs. And by 2022, we put out a grant program where faculty could write grants and get up to $10,000 on how they would use artificial intelligence to enhance learning outcomes for students and student success. And so that really gave way for us then developing the academic programs, the college credit certificate, the associates, and then the first in Florida Bachelor of Applied Science in Artificial Intelligence, which we launched in 2023. What would you say to a student, either a young person or maybe a, someone who's already working that says, I, I hear about this AI stuff, but I just don't know where to start. Like, what would you say to them to, to come here to learn? just walk in. Um, so we have great information sessions, but call us or come and see us. Um, and you're going to just fall in love with the possibilities of AI. And I think more than anything, you're going to see how it's impacting our lives every day. Um, we are all engaged in artificial intelligence and in everything that we do. Um, if you're on any digital platform, uh, chances are there is you are at an intersection of artificial intelligence in some way or another. If you visited the doctor recently, they're using it. I mean, there's not um, there's not an area in our lives that probably is not interfacing um, with artificial intelligence. One of the courses is Introduction to Robotics and Artificial Intelligence for Game Development. They start by learning how to build different types of models of robots so that they learned the mechanics of it, their applications, and as they learn how to first build them, then they go into learning how to program them using basic commands. Uh, so this is one that they have built uh, which similar to the Mars rover. I feel like it will create employment. It will shift in a different aspect. So what I tell my students is that when you learn AI, now you'll you be the one creating the AI. Don't feel like it's coming to replace you. So learn it for you to be able to implement it. So that when the shift comes, you are the one behind the scenes. You're the one coming up with it. You're the one maintaining it because behind AI, the humans will create it. AI presents a profound opportunity for employers and educators for years to come. Miami-Dade College is a leading post-secondary institution focused on artificial intelligence. The cutting-edge programs found here help prepare workers and learners for the future economy. 
we are reshaping the way that companies can look for talent, not necessarily by thinking about AI and masters in AI, which we don't have enough for the amount of workforce that is in it, but actually thinking about bachelor's and even associate level degrees in AI can, that, can, that can mass produce the level of artificial intelligence talent that the nation needs right now. But we have seen how China has put artificial intelligence as a priority as a nation, starting all the way from K-12 into academia and graduate level, they are mass producing AI talent because they want to become the leaders in the globe about AI. We need to have a collective approach in how we're going to handle artificial intelligence, not only from a policy perspective, but actually the support mechanism from a workforce development perspective. We usually see uh, a lot of universities working on AI, but especially research on AI. We need to have a really strong approach about not only research that we're leading in the, in, in the whole world, we need to have an approach in workforce development in AI, and that's an opportunity that is right now in front of us. We need to act. But we're already using AI in our day to day. It's helping people and businesses flourish. It's helping people expand their skills. Sergio's is a Miami based business with several successful restaurant sites. During the pandemic, the business was struggling with staffing, so they turned to AI for help. We had a huge amount of demand coming in, but we didn't have supply. We, didn't have, we couldn't service, so we had hour wait, hour and a half wait all day long, and it was creating burnout in our industry. In fact, a lot of our managers and servers saying, hey, if we keep doing this, I'm gonna quit. Because you had really bad customer service experience, right? You couldn't keep up with the demand. So as long as robots can bring out the food and my people can actually deal with the customers and make sure a great experience happens, we're all for it. So how has a robot impacted your job? The robot has impacted my job very, very much for the better. It's making my job way more easier. I'm doing two things at once, which as a waiter, it's the best thing you could ever do. It's helping me pick up plates. It's helping me take food to the table. It's helping me keep the connectorship with the guests. There are so many ways to enter the world of AI. And as we saw at Miami-Dade College, there are some incredible post-secondary institutions. But traditional classrooms aren't for everyone. Some people learn better on the job. We're gonna go talk to our friends at Miami EdTech with a new AI apprenticeship program. Hello, everyone. Hello. How's everyone doing? ChatGPT, like BARD and Bing AI, is an advanced AI language model designed to generate human-like conversations and responses. And it's becoming increasingly popular across many industries. When I'm doing a like really big research paper, that's a little overwhelming. When I'm learning a new math subject, and I'm not quite sure how the formula works, I like put it on chat GPT asking questions to like either fact check myself or to like see how you would start solving it. So I'm in journalism and obviously journalism requires a lot of writing. So I always want to make sure that what I'm writing is like good and proper and like it's going to be able to be read correctly. So I usually write what I need to do and then I put it in AI and I ask for pointers like, should I keep this? Should I take this out? What can I do to improve it? So Miami is a thriving ecosystem right now. Lots of activity going on uh, at the post-secondary institutions right. with other training providers. How are you stitching together the opportunity? When you have a Miami-Dade County Public Schools and that type of leadership, and you have Miami-Dade College, who just recently launched the first AI you know, bachelor's degree. Um, so when you have those uh, willing leaders mm -hmm. who are basically like, hey, we're doing our part. Mm -hmm. And so if you have all of these pieces doing their part, we've been able to say, did you know that this is doing this? And, and so, you know, combining those moving parts mm -hmm. just makes it easier for the exponential um, impact. Apprenticeship programs truly level the playing field. And what I mean by that is that it's a job first. We're hold, holding the employer accountable and saying, hey, by the way, did you also know that there's incentives such as wage reimbursement or tax credit 
Our registered apprenticeship program in AI was approved just a few months ago. And we added UX UI or user experience and user interface design to the program with the plan on adding potentially multiple occupations to the program. AI, at least through our lens, is really looking at data and learning what tools can be used to make sure that the integrity of the data is accurate, make sure that we can use good tools for visualizing the data. And so the technical experience is very important. Stay up to date with all of JFF's work across the country and send us your thoughts and questions on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Some reports estimate that 300 million jobs globally will be impacted by AI, but not every job will be impacted the same way. Some will be reimagined, some reshaped, some may be replaced, but many will be created. I'm here today with Alex Wurzel, who launched JFF's Center for AI and Future of Work. Alex, welcome to Miami. It's great to be here, Christina. Thank you so much for being here oh, with us sure. today. So you lead the center. Yeah. Talk about the work that you're doing. Yeah. We launched the Center for AI because we know the world is changing so fast. And at JFF, we pay attention to technologies that have the potential to reshape the way we work, the way we learn, and the jobs that we hold. We know AI will do all of those things and more. So the focus of the center really is to think about how we can accelerate equitable economic advancement using AI as a tool and thinking about all of the ways in which not only its potential will help shape the future of work, but the ways in which we need to get ahead of its challenges and to do that now. There are many dynamic opportunities in the AI industry. The Cape Core Center is an organization focused on policy and programs around racial economic equity, as well as technology inclusion. And Lily Genghis is a chief technology community officer at Cape Core. When we think about emerging technologies like AI, there's algorithmic discrimination that has been happening for many years already. We think about the impact of redlining and how that has been mirrored, unfortunately, into digital redlining. When we look at applications of healthcare, mortgage, we know that there's a lot of biases already known that impact black communities differently and disproportionately um, than white counterparts. So I think that as we think about the number one, raising the awareness, having the, the fluency in understanding how this technology impacts our everyday life and also understanding the world that the past history and those systemic systems that have been discriminatory are being coded in further scale. What is so important about engaging communities from the very beginning of developing strategies about how we address AI? It's being able for to debunk the myth that AI is like you need to be a technologist, that it's really only for the folks who are engineers or have been these experts. As I mentioned earlier, a lot of the, in this everyday now life, all of our life is on our phone. All of our behaviors, our patterns, also our public benefits, right, are being one way or the other, being managed through some kind of level of software, some level of decision making. There's a huge need for talent to be able to understand not just AI and the technical side, how it's being applied, how it's being built, but also be able to translate it into all these different roles. And so I would say that right now, I would, the biggest need is investing in the talent to really do the work that we want to see. I wanna pick up on the policy conversation because in addition to the work that's been done already, which has been so tremendous, there is so much more that's still to do. For you, what are the big questions that these policy conversations need to engage with when we think about the solutions that we have to pull together? You may have policies, but if they don't have the, the actual consequences, if you don't follow them, then it doesn't have teeth. And if you don't have, if you're, if you draft it too big, then there's workarounds and it defeats the purpose. And this is why it's so critical to have that multi-sector engagement. We, we need the tech companies, we need the developers, we need the designers, we need the civil rights organizations, we need the funders. We've seen so much across the nation working with learners and workers and employers and entrepreneurs and investors and funders. I'm curious where you're seeing promise around creation of, sustainment of, and activation of inclusive ecosystems. 
just from a technology perspective and then also from an AI perspective? I think one of the, the main takeaways is really understanding that you have to be at the, at the ground level. Each of these ecosystems are different maturity states. We have to also take a uh, look at the role of public policy at the county level, at the state level, because that's where a lot of decisions that impact, as an example, public schooling, the investment for community colleges, the opportunity for formerly incarcerated communities to have benefits and those transitions, those workarounds that are important. We need to also be able to um, identify better right, by each city, the strength of those public-private relationships. So tell me, what were your thoughts? With the ecosystem here is amazing. It what really were your is. thoughts on what they're doing and what's the takeaway? But this is about putting tools in the service of human beings and creating opportunities for us to think about what work is uniquely human work mm -hmm. and most importantly, how we can prepare people for that future. Stay up to date with all of JFF's work across the country and send us your thoughts and questions on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram. This has been an incredible trip to Miami. I certainly know a lot more about robots than when we first got here. Absolutely. And Miami is such an exciting city. It's been wonderful getting to know the team here at the Miami-Dade AI Center. And AI is on the minds of so many. At JFF, we're committed to ensuring that this technology enables more quality jobs. Please send us your questions, your comments on social media. Let's keep the conversation going. And from Miami, goodbye. Adios.